Hey there, it's me, Julie Faith Van Balzer, and I've got a video for you in my art journal. The video is partially in fast forward. It's about these three faces that you can see right here. So let's get started. So I'm working in my junk journal, and you can see that I have a page that's partially painted. I probably cleaned off a paintbrush on it or something. And I have a piece of deli paper, which is partially covered. I think this was a demo I did in class one day on drawing faces. Um, and what I'm doing is I just put out some matte medium, and I put a piece of deli paper underneath my page so it doesn't get uh, gel medium everywhere and I'm going to be using this matte medium and I'm just spreading it around with an old credit card or hotel room key or whatever just to apply it to the page and then I'm going to go ahead and put the deli paper right on there and I'm just going to simply smooth it down and one of the things that I love so much about deli paper and I talk about certainly in my online class about deli paper is just how easy it is to work with you can see so you can add more adhesive at any point and how it just sort of fades into your page it's really seamless and lovely then I'm just going to take some black acrylic paint I think this is golden fluid acrylic paints and I'm just gonna go with what I see there I'm not reinventing the wheel I'm not trying to do anything spectacular I'm just going with what I see there and making things a little bolder a little darker a little more purposeful for lack of a better term and then I'm going to invent some things like maybe a third face that belongs in there because I really think one of the things about an art journal is making sure that things travel across the seam um, and you know ears and I end up doing flowers instead of hair and you can do a lot of fun stuff just let your imagination Role because anything is possible in your art journal. You're not constrained by reality, by real proportions, by real anything. So I always have a good time just making things up. I mean, look how weird and round these big faces are. They're kind of fun. I like them. So I'm cleaning off my brush and then I'm going to go ahead and dry the layers. And throughout the video, you'll see that I spend a lot of time drying because it's important to me that the various layers are dry. So now I feel like the inside of the body is too pink, so I'm going to go ahead and take some deli paper and just try to collage it in there. You can see my incredibly scientific method. People often ask me, how did you collage inside that shape? And the answer is you just kind of cut pieces of paper. I wish that there were some sort of fancy um, technique of some kind, but literally this is what it is, is I spend hours just sort of holding the paper up and kind of mushing it over with a pair of scissors. So then again, I'm just applying the deli paper same way I did before with my matte medium and my um, credit card and just sort of rubbing it all down. And then I'm piecing in some extra pieces as I go to finish filling in that shape because I didn't do a particularly good job cutting it in the first place. So now I'm at the assessment phase and I feel like that face at the bottom is also too pink. So as it turns out, I didn't need to be so careful with the collage because I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Now, at first I'm thinking, oh gosh, I have to cut around the eyes and the nose. And then I think, no, no, I'm super duper lazy. So you can probably guess what that means is I'm just going to collage right over what I've already painted because why the heck not? Um, I can always redraw it. It's not like it was not the Mona Lisa, right? And that's exactly what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and repaint it on there with some black paint once I've done with the collage. Um, and you can see again like this is just a really forgiving process it's just something that's super easy and fun and relaxing and you don't have to think too much about it so once all of that is dry I'm going to put out some paint and I'm putting out colors that are inspired by the colors that are already there so there's already blue there's already turquoise there's already orange so all these colors make sense to me and then I'm just going to go in with the white and what I'm doing is I'm basically thinking about what are all the different spaces that I want to fill with color and the black is a little bit hard to cover obviously so the white paint just sort of gives me a head start into doing that which you can see right there and then I'm also highlighting the face in various places that I think might want a sort of a white highlight now without the white paint drying you'll notice I'm going in into my first color so that the white and the yellow now are kind of mixing a little bit and I like that look and then I didn't clean my brush you'll see and I went straight into the orange and again now the white and the orange and whatever yellows in the brush are mixing and I think the colors look more natural when you do this way I'm also you can see not really fully painting in shapes and at this point, I think I'm realizing that I just made a very bad mistake. Well, not a very bad mistake. There are no mistakes, just creative opportunities. But ah, there's the moment when it hits. Yeah, I didn't mean to cover in. I thought that was a petal, but it turns out it's the guy's ear or the lady's ear, whichever way you want to think about it. So I'm just rubbing it off. And I really need a baby wipe um, or something like that, but that would mean getting up. So you can see I don't go and get it. The problem is you really have to use a baby wipe while the paint is wet if you want to do it. 
but you see, I've made another mistake. I mean, creative opportunity, created a creative opportunity for myself, which is that leaf got painted. And this is one of the benefits to having the underlayer be dry, which is if the underlayer is dry, you can just wipe off the wet paint with a baby wipe and keep moving, which is exactly what I did there. So you can see I put out some red paint too now just to add a couple more highlights and I'm just filling in color everywhere I go. And now I'm actually going to start to add some shadowing into the faces. So I've actually put out another version of blue, um, just, you know, a slightly more pure shade of blue than that turquoise that I've been using. And am I really trying to make the faces look realistic? No, not at all. But what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of shape. And now you have to trust at this part because this looks super fugly. And the faces look really, really angry. So you have to kind of believe that it will come around and not panic. So now I'm taking a very small brush. You can see that it's much smaller than the brush I was using before. And I'm starting to add in some of those details that are going to bring this whole thing around. And you'll actually be amazed at how few of these small little lines you need to really make everything come around. I tend to hit the eyes up the most. A little bit on the lips, a little bit on the noses, just because those are the parts that we really look at in the face. And add some fun details, eyelashes. Um, this guy on the bottom gets some stripes in his ears because, you know, people have stripes in their ears. <laughs> but that's the thing about your art journal. It doesn't have to be realistic. And now the piece de resistance, the finishing touch, is I go through and I add all my little white highlights where they need to be. And this is the thing that I think really makes people come alive, whether it's the, you know, getting the sort of uh, shading in the lips so that they have a little more dimension or adding the catch light in the eye so that it looks like somebody's actually looking back at you, whatever it is, that little heart on the cheek. But there it is. It's done. My three people, and basically it came out of a piece of garbage deli paper that had stuff cut out of it, a scrawly, painty background. But with a little bit of imagination, you know, your art journal is a wonderful playground. So I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and I hope you'll come and visit me over at balsdesigns.com. Thanks so much.